Hey folks, WV2H here, and I'm in my backyard and we're going to build the Delta Loop. Now, Delta Loop is really a great antenna. It has gain over a dipole. It's easy to build. It doesn't cost much to put it together at all. You can put it together for just a few bucks, and, and you don't need a lot of space. You can actually put three antennas in the same space. I'm going to show you how you can do that, okay? So it's perfect for the guy who may have a small backyard but has some height, so really, all you need is a little wire and then a couple of trees and you're on the air. So it's a really good antenna. I'm going to show you all the, 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 the formulas that you need to build one. I'm even going to give you dimensions of the, wire, the size of the wire and the, and the length of the q -max for a 10 meter one. Because I've already started. I have a 20 meter and a 15 meter. The 15 meters inside the 20. So we're going to put a 10 meter inside of that. Okay. So. Three antennas in the same space that have some gain, they receive really well. I mean, I love them, I use them all the time, all right? So, I'm gonna show you how to put that together, okay? Be right back. Hey folks, I just wanted to show you uh, some of the tools we're gonna need. We're gonna need to get ourselves a good tape measure. Now, I bought this at Home Depot for like $30, all right? It's a 300 foot roll. Now, if you're gonna build antenna, uh, antennas, you better have some something that you can measure with that's going to be long enough to, to handle an antenna. This tape measure can build anything any on any HF band. I can build myself a 160 meter antenna measuring it out with this tape. So it's good to have, all right? So we're going to we're going to blade this down, roll it out and then measure out the wire for a 10 meter delta loop. Be right back. Okay guys, I got my Tape measure rolled out and a little some wire alongside of it. And we're going to measure out what we need for 10 meters now. The length that I need, and I'm going to use this 35 and a quarter feet, which is 35 feet uh, and 3 inches. So I'm going to measure out 35 feet 3 inches. That makes my center design around the frequency of 28.510, which is good. It gives me the DX portion of the band and then some. And I'm, I'm and I'm sure I, I can even use it down in the CW portion. My SWR is not going to be too bad because it is 10 meters, it's a higher frequency. So I'll be fine with 28,510. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark here, okay, I'm going to mark where 35 feet 3 inches would be. That would be right here where my finger is. And I'm just going to put a little fold there, okay. I'm going to cut the wire out here to give me something to work with. But nonetheless, this is where. 35 feet 3 inches is okay so now we're going to start actually building the antenna we're going to measure out what a third of that is okay and we're going to mark that so we know where our three corners so the delta loop is triangular so we're going to need three corners so this will measure out where two of the corners would be and now i can start putting up the antenna okay talk to you in a bit hey folks wv 2 h back again all right now that we have the overall length of the wire measured out and cut now we got to do is find where the corners are going to be. That's easy because the delta loop is, tri is a triangle. So what we got to do is divide the overall length by three. So it's 35.25, right? 35 and a quarter by, uh, by three. 3525 divided by three equals 11.75, which is the same as 11 feet, nine inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out 11 feet, nine inches, and I'm going to kink my wire right there, all right? That's 11 feet, 9 inches, and then um, this is where the antenna uh, is going to be supported to. The rope is going to be tied to here. Basically what I do is put a little duct tape, on, uh, not duct tape, electrical tape around it, just so that it doesn't spread, and then I'll just tie it in the corner. Okay, and then we'll put it up. We don't want to really, when we pull it up, we don't want to make it real tight. There's going to be a little play in it anyway, so this way it will stay. It won't slide, it won't slide down on you, okay? So anyway, let me do that. And then we're going to build the Q match. I'll be right back. Hey guys, WV2H right back. It's time to build the Q match. Okay, the Q match is real easy. It's nothing more than 75 ohm coax. Okay, um, this is the same stuff that uh, you use for your cable TV or your internet or just regular regular TV aerial. 75 ohms. All right. So what we did was I got this building stuff. I found this on eBay because it's 95% shield. This is just like using the Mini 8X cable, the, the, the real thin stuff. So it's really no different than using that. Just put a PL259 
what the reducer plus we soldered it all in, okay? Uh, just being careful with the center conductor of this cable because it's a, a real thin solid uh, solid uh, wire so it's easy it's easy to break, okay? So being careful with that, we attached it to 259 with a reducer, okay? And we, we measured it out, the, the length of this Q-match for this antenna that we're building. Now remember the frequency we arrived at was 28,510, okay, because it was easier numbers to work with to get to that frequency so it's close enough. So now we're going to build the Q-match for 28,510. So it's real easy to do. The Q-match for, uh, Q formula uh, is 246 times the velocity factor of the cable, which in this case is 0.66, just like just like the cable you're probably using now, the the uh, the 8U cable or any of that stuff that you're using now. So it's 246 times 0.66 divided by the frequency, which in this case is 28.510. Okay, and that gives you a length of eight feet and five inches. I forget what it was. It was eight point six nine something I forget the number that comes out to about eight feet five inches so we're going to make a Q mesh that's eight feet five inches in length put a PL259 now you don't have to see me do that because you probably already know and we'll put a PL259 uh, on each end and then now we have the Q mesh all right uh, I'll be right back and I'm going to show you something else that we're going to need to use talk to you in a bit Hey folks, so now that we have our QMAX built, okay, now all we got to do is connect everything together, all right, so it's real easy stuff, we're going to connect it to this, all right, this may look like a bound, but I want you to realize this is not a bound, this is just a center uh, connector, it's an ancillator, it's an Unadilla ancillator, okay, um, this is just the one that I happened to buy, you can use any center insulator you want, but remember, it's not a ballon, it's just an insulator, okay? So this way, we can put the two ends of our delta loop connected to this, and then we'll use this to connect to our Q-match, and then the other side of the Q-match is going to get a double barrel connector, double female on each side of barrel connector, and then we'll connect that to your 50 ohm coax. Your 50 ohm coax can be any length that you need, okay? The only size that is specific is the q mats and obviously the length of the wire used for the uh, delta loop, okay? All right, so that's it, basically. I mean, you guys know how to do this. You can connect your antenna to this. You already have your two corners. We have it tied it up. We have the, uh, the fishing line there so we can tie rope to the corners. So now what we're going to do is actually we're going to put the antenna up and then we're going to put it on the air. Be right back again. There it is. That is the finished antenna. As you can see, it's not the most symmetrical design you ever saw, but it works. The SWR is all one to one on that. Okay? So that's it. Let's put it on the air. Many thanks. QRZ, all the five ZZ. Whiskey Victor 2 Hotel. Uh, thank you for the 5 9 in Lebanon. You're 5 9 here in New Jersey, and nice to see you again. Many thanks, Iran. 73, SQRZ, all the 5 ZZ. 3 miles, 5 6, go to you, America. Okay. Work that station with just 100 watts, no amplifier. As you can see on the SWR meter, that the SWR was dead nuts perfect. I mean, it just barely moved. And I worked that guy and he gave me a 5-9 report. Granted, he was coming in real good too, but you got to give credit to the antenna. Now, the one thing is, that meter is one of the tightest meters I've ever seen. I don't know what happened with this radio. I bought this used, but I know it's not accurate because that signal should have been a lot more than what I saw at 5-7 or whatever it said. But he was certainly strong. Okay, so that's it. The proof is in the pudding, or in this case the transmission, the contact. 73 from WV2H. Go ahead and build that delta loop, put it on the air, and get similar results. Bye-bye.